Okay. I've taken forever setting up the angle for this video. I wasted so much time, but I think, I think this is good. Okay, I think this is actually better. This is it. Um, hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am doing a story today, a birth story of my third child. My first son was born in 2010, my daughter was born in 2012, and those videos I will try to remember to post down below or up here in the iCards. Um, so those videos are done, and today I wanna share with you the birth of my third child, my son, Simeon, who was born in November of 2013. He just turned four. So today I'm gonna share with you the story of his birth and I wrote down my notes they're down here below so if you see me looking down bear with me because I'm just looking at my notes so I was due with Simeon on November 5th and I was early with my first two babies I was just a day or two early with both of them but I really expected to be early with my third baby um, I was I through the last few weeks of my pregnancy I felt like this baby is big I even asked my midwives like is this baby gonna be a big baby like it just feels heavy my belly felt heavy just lots of pressure and I thought okay this baby is definitely bigger than my other two were and I just felt like I was gonna go early I was just that much more uncomfortable in my final few weeks of pregnancy and so I didn't go early and I was no signs of labor at all when I was two days late, my midwife came over. I had the same midwife again for my third um, time, which was wonderful. She actually was um, on vacation at the time that I was due with Simeon, and she gave me her cell phone number and said, just text me, um, I really wanna be there. I've been there for your last two births. I love being there. Um, just here's my cell phone number. I'm on holidays, but I am staying in town. So just text me and I will be there. Don't page any of the other midwives. So that was amazing. Um, and so anyway, she came over when I was two days overdue and she gave me a stretch and sweep. And right after I had a bit of bleeding and some cramping and just over the next couple days, I would just, just very, very lightly bleeding, but just a few contractions. And so this was different to me because with both Elijah and Charity, it was like nothing no signs of labor and then like boom contraction started I was in full-blown labor so this was very different to me just having contractions off and on and over the next couple days it was just like I could have contractions maybe once every hour or two for a few for maybe an hour I'd be having them every 10 minutes and then they would die off I would have a contraction like every time I rolled over in bed or if I went from a sitting position up to a standing position I would have a contraction it was just random contractions all over the place and so I'm just like okay when's it really gonna be labor I'd go to bed every night like maybe I'll wake up during the night in labor and then I'd wake up in the morning okay I did it um, at some point today probably I'll go into labor and I was just like being overdue is no fun. So when I was four days late, I was still having these kind of random contractions. I remember going over and visiting at my parents' house that morning. Um, it was November the 9th. And I remember um, my brother and sister-in-law were visiting from a little ways away. And just, I remember sitting there and talking with them and I'd be like, okay, I'm getting contraction, like just these random contractions again. And then we drove home around 2.30. And I remember at about three o'clock, they started coming about every 10 to 15 minutes. Sorry, I have to look at my notes. Okay, they were actually every 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes they were coming. It's been four years. Um, but they weren't getting any worse. They were just every 10 minutes I got one. But I had my phone, I had my app. For This was the first time I'd used an app for contractions and so that was kind of fun. I just got to press the button and record my um, contractions and keep track of them that way. Um, so they were not getting any worse and just all afternoon I was like, okay, like is this labor or is this just false labor? Like what's happening here? Um, I was feeling the contractions but they were not hurting at all yet. Between 7 and 8 p.m., they started to be every 8 to 10 minutes, gradually getting a little bit stronger, and I thought, okay, this has got to be the real thing now. And so at 8 o'clock, I called my sister, um, who was going to be coming over to take care of my kids during the labor. She was coming to watch them if they were awake, and so I had told her, if they're asleep, you can just come and watch the birth if you want to. And she said, oh yeah, for sure I do. So she was 
she was 18 at the time. Um, so I texted her and said, okay, I'm sure I'm in labor now, but don't come. But just so you know, I might be calling you like in the night because it was already eight o'clock. Um, and then at nine o'clock, I went and had a shower and it was like, boom, all of a sudden my contractions were five minutes apart and definitely gradually intensifying. So they were getting worse. And then, okay, I'll share this. I've been like, should I share this part of it or not? Um, so that was nine o'clock. Um, I got out of the shower and my husband and I um, did something that's supposed to bring labor on and hardly at all because it was just like immediately like my cervix was just like contracting and contracting and that was it. And I was like, okay, this, yeah, things are getting real here. And so at 10 o'clock, we, well, we sat down and like watched a movie after that. And I remember just like, like actually having to breathe through the contractions, but they weren't um, really intense, really intense yet, but they were definitely, I had to breathe through them. So at 10 o'clock, I texted my midwife and told her like, hey, I'm in labor, no rush, it's not too bad yet, but just wanted you to give you the heads up that I'm in labor. And so she was texting me back and saying, okay, well just make sure you let me know in time so that I can get the backup here, get my student midwife here, because I had a student midwife who was actually just a few, um, a, maybe three or four months away from finishing her degree and being a certified midwife. So she pretty much was my care provider for this. She like, she came and actually did I think she did the stretch and sweep. No, maybe she was just there for it. Um, but she was like, she was the main one. Um, my my real midwife was just kind of behind her, like telling her what to do every step of the way. But but anyway, so she had to call my student midwife and just make sure she had time to get everything set up and stuff. I think she was just very nervous because my first two labors had gone very fast. So she's like, okay, I know like how fast you go. Like, give me time, give me time. So for the next 45 minutes, like she was texting me, I was texting her and she was like, so how's it going? It'd be like five minutes and she'd be like, so Julie, how's it going? Anything else? Like, do you want me to come? I, do you want me to come? And um, anyway, so we were texting at one point. I know she asked me, how much pain are you in on a scale of one to 10? And uh, I was like, oh, maybe between a six and a seven. And that was a high estimate for me. Like, I really didn't feel like, that much in pain yet really as I've had four births now I know that um until I'm up about about eight centimeters I'm starting to feel like painful and then at nine ten is where I'm like okay this is like yeah really intense painful um but up until that point I'm pretty good at managing my contractions and so anyway at 10 45 I texted her and said okay go ahead and come like I know I'm not there yet I know I'm not ready um to give birth or anything. I know I'm not at near, near to a 10, but just come over just to be safe. And so I also texted my sister and asked her to come over. And so they both arrived around 11 and my midwife went right away was like, do you want me to check you? And I said, sure, go ahead. I was just like walking around the house still. I was drinking a tea. Every time I had a contraction, I was kind of stopping and leaning over a little bit and kind of bearing through the contraction, but I was still very, I was still feeling good overall. So anyway, I went up to my room. I was planning a home birth in case you hadn't realized that. Um, I had two home births already. This was my third home birth I was planning. Um, and so I said, okay, go ahead and check me. She checked me and she said I was seven or, no, six or seven, six or seven um, centimeters dilated. And I said, okay, that's fine. And I just kind of walked around a bit some more and they got everything set up in my room. Um, they have all the supplies and stuff that they have to set up. And so I walked around for a little while and um, they were starting to get more intense for sure. And I said, okay, can you check me again? So this was at, let's see, this was at 1130. So it had just been about half an hour since I got there. And I said, can you check me again? And so she did. And she said, okay, you're an eight. Um, do you want me to break your water? And I said, okay, sure. <laughs> That's fine. So she broke my water. And I remember laying down my, um, student midwife actually broke my water and she was trying to poke it and trying to reach in and not nick the baby's head at all. And so she was trying and trying and I felt a little bit of water or something under me and, I, and she's still trying to break the water. And I was like, um, what's under me? Is it blood or is it water? And she kind of felt and was like, oh, you, I did get some water, but I think it was just such a slow trickle that she didn't even realize that she had um, poked it. And so the baby's head was obviously very low for that to happen. There was no gush. Um, and so my water had broke and I was, 
she, my midwife felt and said that there was still a bit of a lip of cervix. Um, I was probably nine centimeters at this point, but there was still a lip of cervix. And so she said, why don't you get up on your hands and knees and see if um, the baby can get its head past that. This was a surprise gender. I didn't know what I was having yet. Um, and so I did that for a couple contractions. I didn't really like it. I didn't like being on my hands and knees. And I know some people, especially in the whole like natural labor and delivery and unmedicated birth and all that kind of stuff, the big thing is like, you know, be on your hands and knees, be, you know, squatting. And um, I did like to walk around and move during labor, but for delivering, I liked to be on my back. Like that was just my favorite to lay down on my back. And um, that was the most comfortable for me. So anyway, I was on my hands and knees for a couple of contractions. And then I said, can I get down? And I just lay down on my side. And the very next contraction, I felt the baby drop. And my midwife said, okay, well, whenever you're ready to push, just let me know. And I was like, oh, I do feel like pushing. I feel that pressure. So I got onto my back and, sh and um, she said, okay, well, there's still that lip. So I'm just going to reach in and kind of pull that away to try to get the baby's head past that. The baby's head was also kind of behind my pelvic bone. And so it was, it was harder. This was probably my hardest, um, pushing time for sure. It was so uncomfortable pushing when her hand was up there pulling back um, part of my cervix for the baby's head to come out. That was not, it was not nice. Um, and so anyway, my husband had planned to catch the baby. He really wanted to do that for the first time. So after I'd been pushing for 10 minutes, it was 1231 in the morning now. Um, on November the 10th, I pushed and his head came out and then I had to push again. That was another like, yes, this baby's big if I have to push again. Cause usually for my other two births, I hadn't had to push again. One push and the baby kind of slid on out. And so I pushed again and the rest of the body came out and we found out that we had a boy and we were so excited. I had thought he was a boy. That was my, that was what I really felt that he was. Um, and the midwives, I remember them saying like, oh, this is a big boy. He's a big baby. He's got big hands and feet. And I just remember saying, I knew it. I knew it. And the midwives were just laughing because I'd asked, you know, prior. And of course they can't really tell. And so I, when I had asked, is this a big baby? Because it feels big. Um, they were like, oh, it's hard to say, maybe a little bit, but they don't want to say because they, they really can't tell. I didn't have an ultrasound. It was just through feeling. Um, anyway, and so um, I know many people have bigger babies than I did. He was eight pounds and 13 ounces, but my first two babies had been six, 15, and seven, one. So he was almost two pounds bigger than them. So I thought that was kind of cool that I, even through pregnancy, through pregnancy could feel that this baby was bigger, but he was perfect. Um, he was doing great. I um, ended up, I was bleeding a bit extra. So they gave me a shot of oxytocin before the placenta came out. And then after the placenta came out, I was still bleeding a little bit more than they would like to see. And so they gave me another shot of oxytocin and um, which felt weird. Cause it was like, I've gone through the whole labor without any medication or anything. And then getting a shot of this into my body afterwards. Um, but anyway, that did slow the bleeding down. I did need stitches again. I needed stitches all four of my births and I wish I didn't. I always, you know, thought like tried, what can I do different to not need stitches and talked to my midwife about it, but I just always did. And so these stitches, cause he was a bit of a bigger baby. Um, my stitches were even a bit, my tearing was a bit more, um, a bit deeper. I think it was like inside and outside. I needed stitches. Not nice. I know. Um, my student midwife ended up doing the stitches, which was totally fine, but it felt a little bit awkward. Cause of course, like when you get stitches, like my husband had to go grab a lamp and I had to like scoop my bum, like right to the edge of the bed and put my legs on a stool and my bums right at the edge of the bed and, um, light, like shining right on, you know? holding my baby so I'm fine but my student midwife is doing the stitches but my real midwife is standing there like coaching her along like Casey right there make sure you do that and do this and like telling her what to do the whole way which was kind of funny because I'm laying there like okay I'm having to endure these stitches but I'm also hearing like every little detail about what you're stitching up and how to do it and all that stuff so it was kind of funny um but I loved my student midwife like that was it was such a great experience having her there and she was just such a sweet sweet girl she is a registered midwife now um but anyway, so the birth was, was, went very, very well. Um, he was born 1230 in the morning. As soon as all the stitches were done and he had been checked and everything, um, 
he latched right away. And that was one thing that I was always nervous about because my first son had a hard time at the beginning. So every birth after I was like, oh, I hope, you know, that this baby can latch right away because it's a huge, um, it's hard when they can't. It really is hard. You're going through all the, po the postpartum, you know, hormones and stuff and then not your baby not nursing well is definitely hard. Um, so anyways, we named him Simeon Earl. He was eight pounds, 13 ounces. Oh, I should mention, we also, I also got my placenta encapsulated. This was the first time I had done this and really had a great experience with that. Um, I'll, I'll post again up in the iCards. I did a video on placenta encapsulation, but I was really, really happy with how that all went. And that is my story. I'll end right there. So thank you for watching. I hope you will subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. Probably not until January. I'll do a video on my youngest daughter Zara's birth. Christmas is coming up and I have a whole bunch of videos planned for that. Um, but probably in the very early in the new year, I'll do a video on Zara's birth. So thank you for watching this video and like it if you did and I will see you next time. Bye.